Well, this young man is a really accomplished submission specialist, and sometimes fighters get offended when you call them a specialist, but most people know what he's trying to do in there, and to this point, no one's really been able to stop him. John, he will try to pull guard. He yeah. pulls guard anymore in the UFC at this point, but he understands that for him to be successful, the fight has to be in the grappling, in the jujitsu. If he's able to extend these jujitsu exchanges, he is the guy that is generally going to win. He understands position. He understands going from point A to point B. He always is the one controlling the underhook, always has the frame. Just a knowledge of jujitsu that not many people can match. And you can be sure as he makes this walk tonight, he's thinking about just how quickly he can get this fight to the ground and utilize those aforementioned high-level submission skills. Well, we probably trot out the term well-rounded in modern-day mixed martial arts more than we should, but this fighter certainly fits the bill. Oh, 110%. He can do everything inside the octagon. Where he is most comfortable is inside of that eight-sided structure where right. most men are terrified of being. But for this gentleman, he only wants to be there. When you try to wrestle him, he's able to defend takedowns. If you dare stand and strike with him, he can knock you out. He's got all the tools necessary to become a UFC champion. His first martial art, mixed martial arts, yeah. and that's not always the case. He believes that he should have a lot of advantages in this matchup tonight. And now our tail of the tape for this lightweight scrap. Two years apart, these two fighters with similar height and reach. All right, we send it inside the octagon to the veteran voice, Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC lightweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a jiu-jitsu fighter holding a professional record of 16 wins, five losses, and one draw. He stands five feet 11 inches tall, weighing in at 155 pounds. Fighting out of Brasilia Distrito Federal, Brazil, Renato Moicano Canero. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. A mixed martial artist holding a professional record of 28 wins, 12 losses, and one draw. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall, weighing in at 155 pounds. Fighting out of Fontana, California, Bobby King Green! And when the action begins, our referee in charge of the octagon is Herb Dean. Herb Dean, our referee for this one. Ready. You ready to fight? All right, so here we go with round one, and fear is not a factor for him. He feels so confident in all of his skills, he don't care what John, John, it doesn't matter. John, it doesn't matter. It does not matter how well you see yourself as a grappler. This guy's a different level. Yeah. This guy's next level. You want to avoid this at all costs. Maintain distance. Do not go and grapple this guy. Throws the right hand there. Really timing his shots nicely. Good tempo, very accurate, finding the range with relative ease. Okay. Whoa! He's in trouble. He's hurt bad. Oh, he... Oh! Ooh, big knee. Oh, straight right. Look at how he turns his hip into that leg. Big ball punch lands. Now he gets back to range. Oh, and he tags him with the straight hand there. Beautifully done by Green. Three minutes now to go. Oh, double leg lands. We're trying to guard pass here. Not today. No, it ain't happening. Good job understanding the transition. Pretty good work with the strikes here off of his back by Moicano. Oh, lands with the ground and pound strike. A lot of top pressure being applied here. 
Well, there are a few things more fun to watch in mixed martial arts than these type of transitions and scrambles on the ground. High-level grappling can really be entertaining. All right, stack guard here, DC. The feet are on the hips. What does that mean? I mean that he's out. I mean he's out. The moment you get the feet on the hips, all he's got to do now is just straight leg. He's got to kick and push because how is the opponent going to stop him from just elevating him? This is a grown man. You let him get both feet on your hips. You push away, you kick. Jiu-Jitsu stand-up. You know what that is, Jim. I do. You understand that. You know, you went to your Jiu-Jitsu class. <laughs> Post the hand, switch the hips, get back to your feet, get back to fight. Green gets caught with that punch. His chin is held up thus far. Got to show off the defense here, though. Oh, stuffs the takedown without issue. I might let you kick the inside of my leg after the show. No. See how that feels. You don't want that, J.A. Not want that. No one wants that. Even trained professional fighter right. can't take too many of those strikes. Oh, huge right hand! So look at him jumping in to try to get the finish. Round two coming up next. All right, let's look back at some of the action in that round, DC. What a high-level display of offensive wrestling. I mean, this is a joy for me to watch. I enjoy watching a guy maintain this level of wrestling. Good. Over and over, he landed a big body kick. Right hand on point. Big punch lands over the top. How's he gonna call this? And a nice job to stick with it there to complete the takedown. Beautiful movement, hip work on the ground here, just outstanding with the transition. He is not staying in one place on the ground. That's very important. Oh, now trying to isolate an arm, DC. He needs to move his hips back to cover. He cannot allow him on that angle. Continuing to try to manipulate the head here. Now he falls back into the finishing position. The sheer will is, is really remarkable to watch. Full guard now, DC. For the top fighter, you've got to be very careful because most submissions come from the full guard. So advance to half. Try to build posture. But if you're the bottom person, the moment your opponent tries to move to the next position, Build a shield. Kick off the hip and get back to your feet. Back to the stand-up now. Both fighters upright. Well, a really good... Oh! Great job of mixing things up, keeping busy, being very active. Look at that switch knee, beautiful switch knee. Oh, good opportunity to do damage here. He's got that tight clinch. Makano's lower jaw now starting to show signs of swelling. <laughs> Stuffs the takedown, no problem. Nice punch lands over the top. Combination lands, and it seemed like almost every strike found the target. He's so accurate when he decides to attack. It is a sight to behold. All right, he's sort of hanging out here unguarded, DC. Not sure if he's trying to bait him in or what, but not great body language here. is Robbie Lawler versus Ben Askren. Not tapping out tonight. <laughs> Ten minutes in the books. <laughs> All right, so a big knockdown for him, courtesy of that punch in that round. DC, here's a replay. Big moment in the previous round. They were both fighting very well. 
but when he landed this punch right here that sits his opponent down, it showed that the power is not equal. Third round underway. Well, he hasn't really showed any signs of slowing down tonight. He continues to connect on a high volume of strikes here. Takedown defense holds up. And he landed the right hand there. A huge shot there, DC. I'm not sure how he stayed upright. I mean, when you get hit with a shot like that, to stay standing shows and talks to your toughness. around the world celebrating the effort of that young man tonight. It's over! It's over! <laughs> well, you've got to admire the toughness, right, to not tap out. Ultimately, he chooses to go to sleep, but offensively, near-perfect execution on that submission. Beautiful transitions, clearly loose with his hips, and everything he did on the ground was near-perfect technique as he ultimately gets the submission win tonight. All right, let's take a look back at the replay as he gets it done by submission tonight, champ. Just watch how slowly he approaches. Let's go inside the octagon to Bruce Buffett. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean is going to stop for this contest at 1 minute, 28 seconds of the third round. Declaring the winner by submission, due to an arm triangle choke, Bobby King! All right, so here he is, one of the better offensive takedown guys we have in the UFC, DC. And if anyone is well equipped to speak to this, it is you. The opponent knows what's coming. At least to this point in the UFC, no one's been able to stop. He just has to keep him away. Because the moment this guy gets close enough to either grab a leg or make body contact, right. now you're in trouble. He has a knowledge and an understanding of position from a lifetime of just all grappling, judo, wrestling, uh, Sambo, he does it all, and he has just so many ways to get you to the floor. This guy once told me that if you can get your leg, he's going to finish. Right. Because he's going to give you so many things to think about, you will not be able to process and keep up with him, and eventually you're on the mat. It's unbelievable to watch him apply that knowledge to the mixed martial arts fight. And as the wrestlers say, this is not a guy you want anywhere near your bracket. No, you don't want him in the bracket. Well, DC, this is a true mixed martial artist of the highest order. You've watched the film. Hard for me to see much in terms of glaring weaknesses, and he believes he can react to anything that is thrown his way inside that arm. It's unbelievable, because whenever you're trying to prepare for someone, you look for weaknesses. But when you watch this guy, you, nothing jumps off the page. When you think I have to go wrestle him, you realize very quickly that not only can he defend takedowns, he can also go and secure this sure. himself. He's that new breed of fighter that has been doing every discipline from the very start of his career. You know you're looking at a guy that will contend for a championship. And if our fighter meeting on Thursday is any indication, confidence not an issue for this young man coming in here tonight. Our tale of the tape for this middleweight fight. Two years apart, these two fighters with some differences in height and a similar reach. Here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC middleweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a Greco-Roman wrestler holding a professional record of 24 wins, five losses. He stands six feet one inch tall, weighing in at 185 pounds, Chris Jutko! And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist holding a professional record of 35 wins, 17 losses. He stands six feet four inches tall, weighing in at 185 pounds, fighting out of Omaha, Nebraska, Anthony Lionheart 
head. And when the action begins, our referee in charge of the Octagon is Herb Dean. All right, Herb Dean, third man in the Octagon for this one. Ready. California Honda Center tonight, the UFC history and championship history inside these ropes. It's so crazy how the UFC has blessed this arena with so many title fights. Ronda Rousey, Kane Brock, Kane Dos Santos, Me Jones, Me Stipe, Woodley, Cyborg. So many championships have been defended in this arena, and so many championships have changed hands in this arena. Tonight, you get to step foot in what we can call championship city for the UFC. Big kick. All right, so a high amplitude double leg takedown there. Now we'll see what he can do with it to try to advance position on the ground. You knew that he was going to attack the double because he's such an explosive guy. He got it on the hip, finished the shot very quickly. Fantastic job. Shot goes, he's got full mount now. Crazy accuracy and efficiency with these ground and pound strikes here. And if you're the opponent, you got to intelligently defend, or the referee's going to stop you it. you got to defend, but you can see him now starting to gain posture and the intensity at which he's throwing these ground strikes. is starting to improve. It's starting to elevate because he knows that he can get the finish. Oh, man, that was slick. Back to his feet. Look at how he turns his hip over when he throws that kick. Left-right combo is good. Back and forth we go. Just misses there with the left. Mixes it up nicely in terms of staying heavy and also staying active. And misses with the right hand. Big ball punch land. Now we get back to range. Oh, he's got it going tonight. Beautiful combination of strikes there by Jocko. Start to see some of the damage cut underneath that right eye. Mixing it up well. Missed it. Maybe time to get the bonus checks ready. I mean, this fight is about done. He's got to hurt very bad. Now he has to find one more strike to end the night. Oh, man. Don't be afraid to raise the guard as another. He's trouble. And he's back up again. So the takedowns have been there, as oh, have the dead. The to get the takedown, you see. Mr. Miyagi was very, very proud of that sweep. Great job getting into your position and finding that beautiful takedown. Lands with the kick there. No pat on that foot. No shit guard. He's taking all of that kick every time he throws it. Oh, straight hit up the gut, DC. He's in a world of trouble now. They say the straight are the ones that get there first. Right from the top. Oh, for the end of round one. All right, so a big knockdown for him, courtesy of that punch in that round. DC, here's a replay. Big moment in the previous round. They were both fighting very well, but when he... You ready to fight? Ready. Do it. Oh, that's a nice strike. Oh, a huge block there. Well, he's been free. Oh! What a fantastic strike to throw at the exact right moment. He deserves this moment. Go finish his fight. Oh! Oh! He the, strike he's tonight. the biggest shot that he's landed all night. Oh, he might be out. Well, he's always on the counterattack, but a nice leg kick there by Jocka. Oh! And just like that, the fight is over. Go! Oh, oh, my goodness. <laughs> Beautiful shot to end the fight right there. It couldn't have landed much more flush than it did. And I'm not even sure the opponent saw it coming, quite frankly. So, near perfect execution on the strike that ultimately results in the KO here tonight.
So there he is after a monumental knockout. And here we go inside the octagon. Bruce Buffer has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean's called to stop for this contest. At one minute, 31 seconds of round number two. Declaring the winner by knockout, Chris Jumbo! Well, there is no denying this man's striking credentials. Prevailing wisdom is he's going to try to keep this fight standing tonight. He has to. You know, this is what got him to the show. It was being able to use the hands to set up the kicks. We all talk about the high-level boxing background of this young man. But as he's developed, he's developed great knees. Yeah. He's developed great timing, great counter skills, and also the beautiful right high kick. The right high kick is something he hides very well as he follows with a jab right hand left hook. High kick comes over the top, and he can put you to sleep. No doubt about it. He will try to put on a striking clinic once again here tonight. one of the more prolific takedown artists in the UFC at present. And when you get some praise from Daniel Cormier, when it comes to your offensive takedown game, you know you're doing something right. And we talk about wrestlers and judo players and grapplers, but this guy just combines all of that. He is able to use foot from the grappling game. He is able to use throws from judo, and he's able to use wrestling in the, from the wrestling game to take people down. He has an array of takedowns at his disposal, and he uses every single one of them, from the speed of the level change to the timing, to keep the knowledge of where to go next. When the guy starts to defend, he's truly, truly something special. I don't think he can take you down, but tonight he doesn't have to. So in this to. matchup, prevailing wisdom is he'll be able to get this fight to the canvas. And now our tail of the tape for this flyweight tilt. So these fighters relatively close in age, just a year apart, with similar height and some differences in reach. Here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC flyweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a kickboxer, holding a professional record of 25 wins, 10 losses, and one no contest. He stands five feet four inches tall, weighing in at 125 pounds. Kai! Don't blame And now, he his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist, holding a professional record of 24 wins, seven losses. He stands five feet six inches tall, weighing in at 125 pounds. Alex Perez! And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Herb Dean. Herb Dean draws the assignment here. Ready. All right, here we are at Honda Center in Anaheim, California. And every time I walk into this venue, I can't help but think back to UFC 157 in 2013, the night women. Huh. We're finally welcomed inside the octagon and uh, good to be back here, obviously, at a venue that has a lot of history. A lot of history for sport, but the biggest night in women's mixed martial arts history. Ronda Rousey defending her title against Liz Carmouche. What a fantastic night, and it showed that night that women can headline shows and main event and bring the fans. Oh! What a fantastic strike to throw at the exact right moment. He deserves this moment. Don't finish fight. Some real power shots here. Oh! Strong defense there to block the shot. Nice instincts. Oh, beautiful jab there. It's one thing to have length. Of course, it's another to use it effectively. Beautiful job with that jab. Mixes it up nicely in terms of staying heavy and also staying active. Punch over the top. Oh, nice offering there with the knee. He talked to us a lot about that on Thursday. Felt like the knees would be there. It was certainly there on that exchange. He knew they would be available. Just what a big time take -down. Oh, now trying to isolate an arm, DC. He needs to move his hips back to cover. He cannot allow him on that angle.
Two minutes now to go in the opening round. Oh, and he escapes up to his feet. Very nice. Oh, he got absolutely bludgeoned. That's as good a combination as we have seen out of him here tonight. The last time I saw a combination... How's his opponent still stand? I mean, I have no idea. This fight is supposed to be over. And it might not be over now, but it's gonna be over very soon. Oh, that's a hell of a kick right there. He told us Thursday that he was gonna... Oh, he just heard him, he just heard him. And now he lands a combination! What a fight! Strong hook lands. Every time these guys come together, man, you just hear the, the punches and everything. Oh! He needs to start looking to finish now because he's got his opponent hurt very bad. Oh, straight right. Vicious combo there. We got a fight, folks. Oh, big left. Now goes in and secures the takedown. Now he's chased the triangle. And this could be trouble here. Looks like it's pretty tight. He's trying to work his head out of harm's way. It, it might be over. Oh, nice. And this... Oh, and there's the horn at the end of the round. So the fighter was really caught in a submission there just as the horn sounded. Safe to say he was saved by the bell there. So back to the stools they go. 60 seconds to recover here. We're going to fight on, ladies and gentlemen. Another round coming up. All right, so there's the horn signifying the end of the round. A stunner there with the head strike midway through. Nearly got him out of there for good. Almost got him out of there. He hurt him badly. He had his opponent hurt real bad. Now his opponent's walking back to his corner. Everybody looks confused. They don't know what they're supposed to do to try to change the way that this fight is going. Oh, that right hand is on point. Nice one-two combination there. Oh, really using his reach advantage there with that land, DC. Big, powerful punch lands. Now he gets back to range. Sneaky head kick. Continues to mix it up, going to the head, mixing in some body shots. Oh, huge block. Beautiful. All right, he'll engage in a single collar tie. Wow, actually got the takedown. Well, he's more than content to work off of his back, DC, where he has been a magician in his UFC career. Well, you've got to be working off of your back. He's certainly doing so here. Nice punch. Now he has a headlock trying to pin his opponent's back down flat onto the mat. Look from the transition to an arm triangle to try to chase the finish. A triangle, a triangle. There he is, he's moving to the finishing position. Now watch, he go parallel, right? That's where the corner Oh, is. now he's in trouble. Wow. Ooh, right into side control, DC. This is where you want to be now because you get to make your opponent decide. They try to turn back into you, you can attack guillotine. If they turn away to try to get to your knees, you throw your hooks in and you got all your rear choke submissions. Back and forth we go. Well, he was a little bit lackluster in round one. You can't say the same here in this second round. He has really picked up the pace, an uptick in the aggression and the output, and starting to find his range here in the pocket. Beautiful punch. And he landed the right hand there. Oh, nice scramble by him there. Takedown defense on point. He is a master in transition. And they separate. Yep. Head kick home, and now his opponent in a world of trouble. Such a sneaky head kick. He did not recognize him. He died, and now he's got hurt bad. Timing his shots nicely here, champ. He's doing a great job of mixing everything up and using a lot of oh. first strikes. Dude's hurt. Serve him up. Go get him. Oh, he might be out. That one was thrown to end the fight. Yep. <laughs> over and over, he landed these big body kicks. Oh! He's in trouble. He's hurt bad. Entertaining. 
strap so far. All right, next round is underway, DC. We talked about his powerful kicks, how he attacks all sides of the body, the head, the legs. Pretty good start for that. That was so impressive to see. Someone right off the gun. I'm not sure his opponent knows where he is. No, he doesn't know where he is. He's hurt real bad. That punch landed in the perfect spot. All right, so he's landed some good shots. You hate to be overly critical, but nothing really in terms of combinations tonight. Well, the jab has been looking great. How about jab, jab, right hand? Right. Because eventually you're going to have to put something on your opponent that's going to really make him pause. I believe the jab has been working so well. Oh! He's out! Yo! Whoa! That was nasty! What a fight! Just the way he drew it up as he gets the knockout victory here tonight, it's hard to land a strike more flush than he did right there. And I'm not even sure the opponent saw it coming, so they'll see the replay and probably shake his head, but ultimately this is a huge result and a huge win for that fighter here tonight. And there he is, all smiles. What a huge knockout he turned in here tonight. That is one they'll be talking about for some time. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean has called a stop to this contest at 58 seconds of the third round. Declaring the winner by knockout, Carl All right, so here he is, one of the better offensive takedown guys we have in the UFC DC. And if anyone is well equipped to speak to this, it is you. The opponent knows what's coming. At least to this point in the UFC, no one's been able to stop. He just has to keep him away. Because the moment this guy gets close enough to either grab a leg or make body contact, right. now you're in trouble. He has a knowledge and an understanding of position from a lifetime of just all grappling, judo, wrestling, uh, Sambo, he does it all, and he has just so many ways to get you to the floor. This guy once told me that if he can get your leg, he's going to finish. Right. Because he's going to give you so many things to think about, you will not be able to process and keep up with him, and eventually you're on the mat. It's unbelievable to watch him apply that knowledge to the mixed martial arts fight. And as the wrestlers say, this is not a guy you want anywhere near your bracket. No, you don't want him in the bracket. Well, it's always exciting when you have such a high-level Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner. This man has been a master of the submission in the UFC, and even though a lot of people know what's coming, more often than not, they're unable to stop. Because the knowledge, the knowledge of the jiu-jitsu game is truly something that it's hard to replicate when a guy is as good as he is. I mean, he will jump for a triangle. He will jump for an arm bar, and as you slam him to the ground, he starts to understand, okay, I'm right where I need you right now. This is when the game starts for him. If he doesn't secure that submission, he gets you where he needs you to be in order to start to really make you drown. It's like going in deep water oh. and getting pulled down over and over again because every time you think, if I do this, it'll make it better, it just makes it worse. And best of luck trying to find a training partner to simulate this guy in the gym. It can't happen, and it won't happen. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC lightweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a jiu-jitsu fighter holding a professional record of 19 wins, six losses, and one draw. He stands six feet tall, weighing in at 155 pounds, Leonardo Santos! And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a freestyle fighter, holding a professional record of 18 wins, nine losses, and one draw. He stands five feet 10 inches tall, weighing in at 155 pounds. Fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, USA, Evan Dana. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Herb Dean. Herb Dean, our referee for this one. Ready. All right, folks, fasten your seat belts. This could end up being a very technical, very entertaining fight. I'm surprised they didn't bring out the keys for this one, Jim. I mean, you would have thought as a jiu-jitsu watcher that you would see these two competitors 
at a jiu-jitsu competition. But ultimately, they are meeting in the octagon, and you are about to see jiu-jitsu in the UFC like we've never seen before. Well, we told you off the top he had the reach advantage, and you saw it right there with that push. Posturing up now. And now the damage is about to start. Both fighters back to their feet now. Big punch land. Ooh. Able to check the high kick. So inside the open guard of his opponent. You gotta be careful playing around for too long here on the ground with this guy. Oh, nice job to reverse position on the ground. It was bad, but now it's not so bad. What a fantastic sweep. Under three minutes now to go in round one. Oh, blocks the shot. Oh, nice connection there with a the punch, DC. Great time to land that well, I'm an identical twin. Two is better than one. You might as well double up on the jab. He did so effectively there. Doubling up on the jab, and you see his opponent's head pop attack every time it lands. Man, is he timing his shots well here tonight, DC. It's hard to recall him being this accurate in the past. I mean, he is so sure. That's a perfect scramble right there. Beautiful transition. Look at the force behind that leg. Oh, man! A huge kick to the body. Best submission specialist we've seen in a long time. So there he is, your winner by submission tonight, and that is how you put the rest of the division on notice. A huge result for him here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean has called stop to this contest at four minutes, 46 seconds of the very first round. Declaring the winner by tap out, Evan Tana! Well, always exciting when this guy shows up on the fight card, Daniel. He is a true mixed martial artist. Not really any glaring weaknesses, at least, that he's put on film thus far. He's the new breed of fighter. Those kids that start doing everything at six years old. They start wrestling, they start doing jiu-jitsu, they start to box. He's one of those guys that has every one of those skills and he does them all at an A-plus level. He's got tremendous cardio. He is the type of fighter that in a few years will just litter the UFC roster across the board. And oftentimes his opponents will say, he doesn't really do anything special, but he does everything at a plus level and he believes he'll have a lot of advantages in this matchup tonight. probably trot out the term well-rounded in modern-day mixed martial arts more than we should, but this fighter certainly fits the bill. Oh, 110%. He can do everything inside the octagon. 
where he is most comfortable is inside of that eight-sided structure where most men are terrified of being. But for this gentleman, he only wants to be there. When you try to wrestle him, he's able to defend takedown. If dare stand and strike with him, he can knock you out. He's got all the tools necessary to become a UFC champion. This first martial art, mixed martial arts, yeah. and that's not always the case. He believes that he should have a lot of advantages in this matchup tonight. Our tale of the tape for this bantamweight fight. Eduardo is three years his senior. He will have a five-inch reach advantage. All right, now to get us started, here's Bruce Buffett. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC bantamweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. A mixed martial artist holding a professional record of 13 wins, seven losses. He stands five feet six inches tall, weighing in at 135 pounds. Frankie Sides! And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. A mixed martial artist holding a professional record of 28 wins. 12 losses. He stands five feet seven inches tall, weighing in at 135 pounds. Fighting out of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Johnny Eduardo! And when the action begins, the referee in charge, Herb Dean. Herb Dean, our referee for this one. Ready. Ready to fight. Well, these guys have been on each other's radars for quite some time. Tonight, it shall be done. Both guys well-rounded. You think we're getting a kickboxing match tonight or what? You just don't know, right? You don't know who's going to be able to employ their strategy the way that they need to. This is a close fight on paper, and also in every performance we have seen them put on, these guys seem to be the mirror image of each other. Oh, really using his reach advantage there with that land, DC. Oh, and he gets tagged. Nice combination there, and might not be a bad idea for the opposition to just tweak that head off. Yeah. The he was landing one before. Now he's throwing everything in combination, and they're all landing. Two. Dude's hurt. Serves him up. Look at him. Nice one, too. Look at him working. Trying to shut the liver oh. And Wardo gets hit with a kick. And both guys really throwing with authority. Oh, now gets an underhook to get a more dominant position. He lands a big knee to the body. And those knees aren't just for effect. Those are doing real damage. Takedown. Back to his feet. Just misses there with the left. Signs gets hit by that leg kick. You may want to start checking some of these. Good punch. Real sneaky body kick. Mixes it up nicely in terms of staying heavy and also staying active. Kick to the body by signs. That's how you defend the single leg. Oh, big knee to the body. That'll soften him up. Looked like it did stun him a little bit. Oh, he's hurt bad. He's hurt bad, John. He's got to press him. He's got to go chase that finish down now. I love watching this guy move on the ground. Another nice transition there. Such a high-level grappler. You don't see that very often. Signs his pass attempt denied. Well, you see all the grappling repetitions here. Just now he's attacking the triangle. Triangle looks pretty tight, DC. I'm no Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt, but maybe not good here. No, it looks like it's getting in deep. A triangle, a triangle. There he is. He's moving to the finishing position. Now watch he go parallel, right? That's for his opponent. When it's time to finish his tight. Right into side 
control here, DC. Biggest difference between half guard and side control. Well, side control to me feels like a little bit less control. Oh, oh, and there's the horn at the end of the round. So the fighter was really caught in the submission there just as the horn sounded. Safe to say he was saved by the bell there. So back to the stools they go. 60 seconds to recover here. We're going to fight on, ladies and gentlemen. Another round coming up. All right, a lot of high-level highlights from that last round, DC. Take us through the replay. If he fought like this, I would be comfortable entering him into a K-1 level right. kickboxing competition. He's that good at finding and landing those kicks at will. He needs to continue to do this as the fight goes on. All right, DC, buckle up. Here we go with our next round. High number of kicks landed in the previous round, and he'll look to keep it going. He'll look to keep winning the fight with his kicks. He's throwing high kick, leg kick, body kick. He's even throwing a couple spin kicks in there. This guy is so excellent. Big strike lands. Big strike lands. Now he looks to try to chase down that finish. What a fantastic strike to throw at the exact right moment. He deserves this moment. Go finish this fight. Both fighters throwing heat now. An uppercut landed. Very tricky when he throws that body. Sides gets caught with that punch. He's treading water now. Got to find a way to move those feet. Big punch from the clinch. Man, he's timing his shots nicely. It's like Tom Brady out there. He hasn't missed the target. I mean, you insist on bringing in Tom Brady. Stop him. Stop him. Stop him. Well, you saw us reference it in the tail of the tape, DC. He's got the reach advantage and certainly made good use of it there in landing that check. All right, single collar tie now. And he lands a punch there. Pretty good connection by him. Great connection. He's in a great flow right now. All right, so once again, the fighters engage in the clinch. We'll see who will have the upper hand. Oh, that was a big takedown. Is this the one that's going to break him? Well, there are a few things more fun to watch in mixed martial arts than these type of transitions and scrambles on the ground. High-level grappling can really be entertaining. Well, his corner was pretty urgent after round one. A little bit lackluster there in that opening round. He has certainly picked up the pace here, and as a result, he has taken control of this second round. Big knee lands right to the opponent's midsection. Oh, another knee by Johnny Edwarder. Beautiful body kick. Signs is in her thigh, a deep shade of purple at this point. Immediately gets the underhook. And he oh. comes through with a big knee. Can't take many of those, you better check. All right, he engages in a single collar tie here. Oh, nice. Well, that one should leave a mark. Outstanding leg kick employed there by Frankie Sides. Single collar tie now. Well, you better start doing something defensively. A lot of these knees are landing to the bottom. I mean, and it's going to drain you. You cannot stand there while someone has a clinch and is just driving knees into your body. Man, he's just got a great feel for the striking realm early in this one. The timing is on point. He's doing a great job of mixing everything up. Look at the whip action that comes from him throwing that kick. Final seconds here. And that's the end of round number two. All right, so there's the end of the round. He stayed committed to doing damage upstairs and landed a seminal blow in that round. It was accumulation of those strikes. We're tied. We need to go out there and really take control of it. You ready to fight? Ready. Third yeah. round underway. Oh, and he connects with the elbow. Huge connection by him there. He needs to get on his bicycle, John. He needs to get into space so that he doesn't get finished. Oh! Wow! He's in trouble. He's hurt bad. Oh, nice straight there. I guess that's the quickest way to the target, right? Just throw straight. Straight down is always best. And now he lands a combination. Now a knee. Much improved defensively as he blocks the shot. They continue to exchange.
Well, most fighters can't keep up this type of aggression and pace, but you don't have to worry about this guy. He hasn't really... Oh! He needs to start looking to finish now because he's got his opponent hurt very bad. Oh, he might be out. Gets caught with that punch. Not the easiest guy in the world to hit, but he got caught there. Oh, single collar tie here. Continues to mix it up, going to the head, mixing in some body shots. Whoa! Oh! He was hurt. There's him up. Go get him. Oh, nice straight punch there. Must be nice to have a reach advantage like this, DC. Oh, there's the head kick. Looked like there might have been a win. Huge elbow there. Oh, he's first back. That is it! He got him! Again, the winner here was so aggressive with his onslaught that ultimately appeared as though the outcome was an eventuality. So if you're the referee, you got to protect the fighter. And I thought he did a good job of doing just that. So a seminal. Now we go inside the octagon. Bruce Buffer with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean has called us out to this contest at three minutes, 23 seconds of the third round. Declaring the winner by TKO, Johnny Hicks.